Richie Amarone, Bloomberg Senior Economist. So nice to see you at a fishing lodge in Maine. It's great to see you. So you have been a student of the economy for many years. Uh, one thing you do is look at corporate earnings and gauge what it's telling us about the economy. So what have we learned in this quarter? Well, this is, this is very interesting because what I do is I read 300 quarterly earnings transcripts every year. I'm sorry, every quarter. And what you hear are people now talking about they're facing higher price pressures from um, minimum wage legislation around particular areas in the country. You're seeing higher costs because of uh, the uh, Affordable Care Act, those, those, those things. And they're passing on, and they're commenting on passing on higher prices. So whether it's menus, if it's a restaurant, or if it's uh, elderly uh, health care, they're passing on higher prices. So for the first time in a very long time, I've heard, I'm hearing that, you're, uh, that they're passing on higher prices. And I'm sure the strong dollar, you still are hearing a lot of that. It's been a lot I of believe the stronger dollar is probably the biggest thorn in, 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 in the Fed's, in the Fed's um, uh, side. That's for sure. Because, I mean, if you look at everything, and that's only going to send prices even lower. So now you have this, this bifurcation between people passing on higher prices for, for restaurants, for, for accommodations and services, and then you have people cut, cutting prices because of commodity costs that are tanking because of the stronger dollar. So it's interesting. I mean, sometimes it's good when prices rise, but in this case, we don't really have rising wages. So what does that mean for the economy if we might have some price increases, but really the average consumer isn't getting a pay raise? This is, that's a problem, right? That's the biggest problem there is. Consumers are running in place. They're running just to stand still, and, and they're spinning their wheels, basically. Now you're, they're not making as much money, and then adjusted for inflation, they're, they're, not, they're really not making a whole heck of a lot of money. And, and how do you facilitate trade or spending or uh, you know, consumption by how much money you bring in? And if you don't bring in the money, you don't have the money to spend. And that's a problem. And that's the problem, in fact, that the, the number one problem, I think, I believe, that, that's compromising economic activity as we go ahead in, in, in 2015 and, and even 2016. So what does that mean in terms of real GDP growth in the U.S.? Well, if... if if three quarters of, um, of, all, of all economic activity comes from consumption expenditure, consumer expenditures, and, and the consumer is not making enough money, which is the fuel for greater spending, you're not, you're not going to get that great. And that's why we've had this, this milk toast, if you will, 2%, 2.5%, 1.5% economic growth quarter, quarter, quarter. You know, it's, it's, it, we're, we're muddling along. It's not a strong thing. It's not a positive thing. It's, it's not a confidence-inducing uh, um, influence. We're, we're, just, we're just merely getting by. And we don't want, at this stage in the game, six, seven years um, after the, um, you know, uh, the, the, the commencement of the... Um, Financial crisis. Yeah, yeah right, right. Now, yeah. now we're here. And, and now we're starting to just slow down and muddle down into, into, into this slow thing. I, you know, I don't, I, don't see how, I don't see how much longer we can go at this pace before we start to roll over into something very negative. Rich Amaro, great chatting with you. Thank you.